Okay, um... We might, um... We might start now, I think. All right, task two. Task, task, task three, I mean. Uh, the project. <laughs> Sorry. You've got to put the graph in yourself. We haven't given you the graph. Because, as you probably know, in this course, we are obsessed with correctness. We're really interested when we look at computing. We see it as a source of errors. And we're interested, uh, a constant source of errors from all different directions and angles. And we're very interested in how we control and manage these errors. What are, the, um, what are some likely obvious errors you could catch you up in the project? The What's that? The the trains, yeah, you could just not allow for trains correctly. That's right. Trains are a source of complexity. Um, you know, actually, during the break, Thurston told me that the, um, my idea for doing Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon, which as an assignment, which I've had for so many years, he said another course is now doing it. Which course was it? 3171. What's that? A TAFE course. What is it? C, oh, the C++ course, okay. Uh, they're not doing it with the internet lookup, but ah, the assignment's been done. But already, I know a better assignment than that assignment that we could have next year for 2911, because uh, some, students from, some students from 1917 last semester invented this all by themselves, which is very clever, which was um, uh, perhaps we give you all the train timetables of the state rail network, and you have to That's somehow... <laughs> and you uh, somehow... Um, do a, now let's think, what's the cycle where you travel on every edge? Hamiltonian cycle. You, you have to somehow do, oh, Hamiltonians without repeats. You somehow have to do a, a you have to somehow cover the whole network visiting uh, every single station, traveling over every single leg of rail, and you have to do it within a day. Now notice that this is an interesting scheduling problem. It's possible to do, because the students that thought of this actually did it in one insane, crazy day uh, with no sleep at all. Uh, but why is this not a normal graph-solving problem? Why, for example, would something like the hypothetical Dijkstra's algorithm, which we haven't yet looked at, but we keep nearly looking at, why wouldn't that help us solve the problem? Uh, maximization rather than minimization? Maximization rather than minimization? Uh, you, um, yeah, I mean, you could frame it as a maximization, but I'm looking for something else that's even more fundamental to the nature of the problem that makes it not really a graph problem in, in the same way. You have to do What's that? In some order. You have to do them in some order? Yeah, but then traveling around a graph, you always visit, if it's doing a depth of search, you do an adjacent ones. The graph doesn't change over time. The graph doesn't change over time, yeah. Unfortunately, the edge weights, the best path at any given instant might depend on what time of the day it is. It might depend on connection information. So it's not as though you've got some static graph with static edge weights and you have to optimize over it. You have a very complex optimization problem because depending on where you are at any given instant, everything changes. And if the train's running a bit late, say, well, even if it's not running late, but uh, you know, taking this route at this time might not be as fast as taking this route 10 minutes later. In fact, I used to find that traveling to work, it was really weird. For every extra 10 minutes I waited to go into work in the morning, I'd get to work half an hour later. And I thought, if only I could somehow run that backwards and create time out of nothing. Yeah. But no, I only ever ran it the wrong way. Um, so can you see that I've snuck a little bit of this into the um, Dracula game? with the trains and the Dracula game. They also have this strange problem that there's a time-based dependency, but it's, it's, it's a very small amount of varying in it, so you can actually deal with it. But I wanted to, you to start um, having to think beyond just standard graph algorithms. Though the standard graph algorithms are uh, the solid basis that you'll need to implement to start looking. Okay, so... Um,
so the trains on the graph, which came from, um, I want to say Cecil, but it's not. Cliff, Clifford. Um, uh, that's a right, that's good. Yeah, the trains are a source of error, they're a source of complexity, so that's something that could go wrong. What else could go wrong in the project? What else is a source of, ah, oh, errors? That might stuff you up, and all your intelligence will go to waste because of some stupid little mistake you made. Using the wrong graph, you stick in the wrong graph. How could we have solved that problem for you? We could have given you the graph. Why didn't we give you the graph? It would have been so easy if we'd given you the graph. You, it would save you a whole lot of mindless typing, and it would save you this incessant, nagging doubt that must constantly be running through your mind, thinking, oh yeah, but uh, I wonder if I got the graph right. It's probably right, but I wonder if I did. And I could have just solved that for you, or the tutors could have solved that for you, by giving you the graph. So why do you think we didn't give you the graph? You're mean. We're mean? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we're not as mean, we're undead. <laughs> but why else? This is, why, this is what it's actually like when you're doing something. There's normally not some magical fairy godmother that appears and says, yes, you got that right. You're just about to launch the space shuttle and you're thinking, did I get the launch codes right? And I'll just ask the fairy godmother. I'll complain on the forum that no one's told me. Yes, I got them right. No, I got them wrong. Oh, well, I should only lose a few marks. <laughs> yeah. It's not like that in the workforce. There's no one to hold your hand. It's just you. Between you and the abyss is nothing. So you've got to build some superstructure between you and the abyss. So how, how can you gain confidence that you have put the right graph in? Get two people to do it. Get two people. Independent checks. This is one thing we like doing whenever we have uncertainty or errors that are hard to control. Try and do it in two independent ways and check that they both add up. Yep, that's good. Two people to do it. You do have two people in your team, so that's possible. That's right. Other ways of doing it. See if someone else did it right. See if someone else did it right. But now we've got a problem, which is... Well, someone else could have done it wrong. Someone else could have done it wrong. But no, it's an even more fundamental problem than that. I mean, not more fundamental than that, but a different problem to that. Someone might have got it wrong, but probably not in the same way you got it wrong, so you've got a good chance of catching things. But what's the difficulty in seeing if someone else... You, you want to compare your graph to your graph. You're not allowed to. You're not allowed to. That's called... Plagiarism, cheating, something. You know, if we found it out, we'd have to expel you from uni. But it's what you need to do. <laughs> so can you think how? And even comparing your code with their code wouldn't necessarily help. Uh, because unless it's line for line identical and everything's in the same order, how can you compare it? You can compare the output of something, yeah? You want to sort of summarize the whole graph in some output. What's that called? Hashing. So you want to hash your graph. Because it's hard to compare two graphs, but it's easy to compare two numbers. numbers. So if somehow you could convert your graph to a number, and you could convert your graph to a number, and you could convert your graph to a number, and you could convert your graph to a number, provided you all did the same algorithm of converting it to a number, regardless of how you represented the graph, you should all end up with the same number. And someone has suggested this on the forum already, otherwise I wouldn't be mentioning it. It seems like a brilliant idea to me. This gives us our independent checking. So I strongly encourage you to praise that person on the forum and sort something out amongst yourselves to do that, because that sounds like a really brilliant idea. This dealing with errors thing is just always a problem. It's really hard for us to do it. Um, shh, shh, shh.